Welcome to the Cosmic Busker. My name is Bobby Cody. In this particular video, I want to continue to take a look at uh, Randall Carlson's podcast that he's doing. A podcast is called Cosmography. I'm going to post the link up there or up there, somewhere up there, so that you can go to it. He also has another uh, YouTube channel. Uh, that YouTube channel is called Geocosmic Rex. He, he has some older uh, talks that he's given on similar subject matters. I'll post a link for that as well so you can visit both of his YouTube channels, Cosmographia and Geocosmic Rex. Now what I want to do right now is take a look at uh, one of his more recent podcasts from a couple weeks ago. I've been uh, trying to get this completed for a while. So basically in this, uh, this podcast he talks about the physical evidence that there could have been and more than likely was an Atlantis. Uh, so I want to take this piece by piece. Uh, I'm going to show three clips from Randall Carlson. Here's the first clip where he's talking about the Mid-Atlantic Ridge uh, from which we presume that Atlantis, um, the location, which is where the location that Atlantis uh, was uh, in the long ago past, about 12,000 or years ago or longer. I just want to talk about two different um, definitions that Ronald Carlson uses real quick so you can get an understanding. He talks about isostasy or isostatic. That references um, the, like, the, the glaciers during the ice age. And the glaciers, like two or three miles worth of ice or glaciers on the land, and what that does is it pushes the land down. Now when you push the land down, what happens is like a balloon. You push, push in a balloon and the other part of the balloon goes up. It's the same thing with the planet Earth. So if you have the ice age and you have a massive weight of two to three miles worth of ice in one location, in the other location it's going to cause the land to rise. Um, there's another um, uh, word that he used, immersed. Uh, it means it comes up out of the, out of the water. So I'm going to cut to that uh, Randall Carlson clip right now where he talks about um, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And we'll come right back. Well, let's take a look at this one. All right, here we go. Okay, now you can quite clearly and distinctly see the Azores Plateau right here. And you can see the suture line that comes down here, separating the North American plate here from the European plate here, sometimes called the Eurasian plate, and the African plate here. So this is a triple junction. So a triple junction is going to be one of the most flexible and thinnest pieces of crust on the planet. So the theory would be that this isostatic compensation, which causes vertical movements, could be strongly uh, localized around this particular zone of weakness right here. So you can kind of picture this kind of a, an effect, and you get these large transform faults that are coming essentially at right angles to the ridge. You could, you could realistically think of those as almost like the Earth's stretch marks. Um, so the question would be, is it possible that this Azores Plateau was significantly e immersed during the last ice age? And I think the answer to that it would be, it quite likely was. Um, <clears throat> we know that. So as you can see from that clip, uh, the physical location where Atlantis is alleged to be by Plato. Uh, I've done a video on that regarding Randall Carlson. I'll post to that up in the corner there or there somewhere real quick. Um, but that mid-Atlantic location is absolutely scientifically, potentially, the could be the location where Atlantis was. And now in this next clip, he's going to take a look at the names of all the different seamounts that could have been Atlantis there in the Atlantic Ocean and what they're named. And just the name alone suggests that, you know, scientists who named it knew what they what these locations were. I'll cut that real quick. And it pulls of the yes. Earth. Because, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So here's just some of the, the nomenclature of that particular area. This is the Azores Islands, and this is called the Atlantis, curiously, the Atlantis Seamount, mm. the Plato Seamount, the Great Meteor Seamount, and Cruiser Seamount. 
We'll be getting back to those. We'll have further discussions on that. So now in this final clip, uh, we're going to have Randall Carlson reading from the writings of uh, Maurice Ewing. Uh, Maurice, Maurice Ewing was one of the pioneers of an oceanography. Um, and he led a vessel out into the Atlantic Ocean, dredging the seafloor, looking just for evidence of what had happened in the past on the, in the Atlantic Ocean, in particular in the uh, middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, we'll cut to Randall Carlson reading from Maurice Ewing's writings right now. I'm going to just quote a little bit here from, from the article. So, um, and it's, it's written by Maurice Ewing. He says, okay, in quotes, we're over the ridge. All hands were tense as the word spread through the little research vessel, Atlantis, for it meant we had reached our goal. A mile or so beneath our keel stretched the gloom-shrouded peaks, valleys, and ridges of the longest mountain system on Earth, the mysterious Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which we had come to explore. And, of course, they want to make sure that everyone understands. They say, though our ship was named Atlantis, we had no illusions of solving that age-old history. So a rather wild idea had led us to devote four hours to this particular rock dredging. Now, what they were doing was they were actually pulling dredges along the ocean floor to scoop up rocks and materials off the flanks of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Okay, so our hypothesis was that the long level terraces with sediments ranging up to 3,000 feet in depth were submerged shorelines. Okay, so they had noticed along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that there were level terraces. Okay, you got to picture that, right? So they've now th they thought, could these possibly be shorelines? So this is what they're going to try to try to get to the bottom of by dredging off materials off of these terraces. If so, if they were in fact shorelines, the steep cliffs rising from them should have boulders at their bases as do wave-cut cliffs on our shorelines today. And he says, it is, of course, extremely radical speculation to identify these level stretches more than two miles below the sea surface as former beaches. Such a theory would require the obvious but almost incredible conclusion that the land here has subsided two miles or else the sea has risen by that amount. Much work will have to be done before this startling theory can be proved or disproved. In any case, we were encouraged to find that at the bases of the cliffs above such terraces, rocks and boulders could be readily, readily obtained. Wow. He says, then about halfway between New York and Bermuda, we bought, brought up one of our most remarkable cores. It included sand like that found on beaches. How did beach sand get here, 300 miles away from any shallow water? I decided that it must have come from a mountain now beneath the surface of the sea and predicted that such a seamount would be found nearby. Months later in April, a mountain, as forecast, was discovered by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. At least a mile high, the mountain lies at approximately 36 degrees 42 minutes north and 67 degrees 57 minutes west. If the peak is the source of the sand, it must once have stood at or above the level of the sea, since sand is formed by weathering and wave action. This indication that the sea bottom has subsided or the sea itself has risen coincides with some scientists' interpretation of the submarine canyons off many coasts. The same core told us further story, a further story of changes in the, in the ages past. The sand contains the remains of bottom-dwelling creatures living today in present oceans but confined to much shallower and colder water. 
The upper part of the core consists of a brownish silty mud containing quantities of the tiny shells of the warm water loving creatures which flourish today in the Gulf Stream. And similar warm water forms appear in the layers of the silty mud below the sand. With this evidence, reports David Erickson, who had charge of the analysis of bottom samples, we can be quite sure that the sand layer was deposited during the most recent ice age when tremendous masses of ice largely covered Canada and the northern parts of the United States, Europe, and Asia. Right, so let's pause there. For As you can see from that clip, there's an abundance of evidence that that Mid-Atlantic Ridge, in particular the seamounts in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, were once above the ocean level, were, were land. Um, and could potentially actually be Atlantis. I've done some previous videos on Atlantis. I'm going to click, I'm going to post a link to one of those videos now. It's called uh, This Guy Believes in Atlantis. Uh, in that video, I, t I essentially, I don't think I give him credit, so I want to give him credit now. In that video, uh, it covers some of the information that I have researched in the past, way back in the 80s, from a gentleman by the name of Ignatius Donnelly, I think it was. Um, he wrote a book called Atlantis, it's an old, old book from the early 1900s or late 1800s, if I remember correctly, um, where he goes over the evidence uh, of the existence of Atlantis. Uh, and in that video, uh, I, essentially I cover all of it, Ignatius Donnelly's evidence for Atlantis, and I can tell you right now, based on watching Reynolds and Carlson's podcast, and he references Ignatius O'Donnell or Donnelly, I can't remember his proper name. He references him a couple times, and I can see that he's leading up to some of the information that I present in that video, too. So um, uh, you can take a look at that. Other than that, thanks for everybody for watching. Uh, thanks for listening to this quick, uh, this quick video. Um, if you uh, enjoy this, please like and subscribe, and everybody have a great day. Thanks.